the software we'll be using, I'll just showcase that. It's, uh, it's called Procreate Software, a uh, low-cost app uh, available for iPad, iPhones, uh, $10. I think it's US. Um, and, uh, you know, a great uh, tool. And what Jeff's going to be demonstrating is all done on an iPad. Uh, so very, you know, accessible if you already have an iPad. And technically, you can be doing it on your iPhone as well. Uh, he'll be using an Apple Pencil. Uh, you can also just be using, uh, you know, any kind of a stylus, like a non-Apple uh, stylus type uh, you can purchase as well. Or even a lot of people just use, even use their fingers. So, um, you know, any way to start learning and exploring and be creative, it's a... Uh, a great way to do that. So, um, yeah, let me uh, hand it over to uh, to Jeff here. So, thanks everyone, and here's Jeff. Thanks so much, Tom, and welcome everyone to the uh, to the today's lesson. And uh, superheroes, um, well, superheroes has a very interesting history, um, and uh, I can you can take it back to the uh, 1830s, I believe, in uh, a British. Um, a British character, literary character called Spring Heeled Jack, who was um, kind of a almost like a villain. But uh, as time wore on and as, as he began to grow throughout history and by created by other people, he became almost like a superhero by the time uh, um, the last stories uh, in that era were done in the around the turn of the 20th century. And um, now he was. Um, kind of disappeared but the, the 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 genre that he was in the pulp genre which is very popular was very popular uh in the working class and the industrial age in england and uh when it when uh, liter this type of literary form came to north america very popular here in the form of the pulps and then later in uh pulp comic books which were very popular throughout the uh um the uh, early era of, or era of newspapers, which would be in the 1910s and on, and probably the heyday would be the 1930s and uh, flourished uh, throughout the 1950s. And then comic books became very popular in the 1930s and 40s during the Depression, war years and post-war years, and then uh, throughout the 60s and have kind of come and gone in popularity ever since. Uh, they basically the the comic book um, in the form it's known now uh, started with a, a comic character named superman that was created by uh, uh jerry siegel and joe schuster uh joe schuster was a canadian who uh, created the character that they, they basically created it as a newspaper feature and uh, eventually it caught on as a as a, a comic book and uh, it launched the uh, the modern comic book as we know it and um, and the superhero was born, and and the superhero is uh, is now possibly one of the most uh, popular forms for entertainment now now that the uh, Marvel comics have uh, gotten into movies and probably make uh, more movies than they do comics in in this day and age. So uh, so certainly a pretty exciting form, and um, I hope. Uh, uh, if you're interested in it, it's certainly very interesting to learn. There's there's a lot of material out there uh, on the internet. Uh, certainly, a lot of material um, uh, in libraries and whatnot. If if you haven't got access to the internet, uh, libraries and uh, um, you can buy books on the subject on drawing superheroes and how to create comics. Uh, it's a pretty popular subject right now. So. So this is a uh, my version of, uh, of of like a primer toward this. So we'll get started right now. I'm just going to move over to my tablet here, and we'll just uh, get a good shot of that. I hope. And uh, so the figure I have on here now is a um, a, a superheroic form. Now this could be a male or a female figure at this point. I think by looking at the legs, probably a male, but. Um, uh, basically, the superhero is eight and one half heads tall. So that's uh, the uh, feet from the feet to the uh, the ankles would be about a, a little above the ankles would be a head. Mid shin would be um, three, four would be at the knee, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, all the way up to the the um, to the head here. And uh, the the f the figure is. Um, uh, has the head, of course, which we will uh, take a look at 
just quickly now, I'll just go back to the superhero head figure I have here. And the head, as you can tell, is a circle modified, uh, stretched down to uh, the chin area and to below the nose. And um, the, uh, uh, the face and mouth where the bottom of the nose is, it, you do a triangle down to find the, where the, the edge of the chin is. So very mechanical, but uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, technical uh, advice out there and a lot of ways, uh, you know, just do a Google search about how to draw uh, anatomy, anatomy lessons. That's always a good um, a good place to start. And then we'll do later, we'll do some angles and some um, dynamic emotions of, of faces later. So I, I hope we'll have time for all of this today. So let's, uh, let's get a start here at the at the main character here. And uh, let's start with a, um, a male character. So I'm going to uh, create a new layer here in uh, Procreate, which is a very, very good program. I really enjoy it that you can, you can create a layer and, and, uh, and draw in a, and, and erase it if you don't, uh, if you don't like it. it it's so forgiving. <laughs> I really appreciate that after, you know, many, many years of using the tools that are, um, that aren't, aren't, aren't as forgiving like pencils and, um, pencils and the erasers and whatnot. So we'll get started at the, uh, at the physique here. Whoops. I've already started to draw a line. I can do the undo tool here. So we're, uh, we have the basic shape, which is the oval for the head. Uh, an egg shape for the head. Then we have a circle for the chest area. And you'll notice that um, the, the character is a series of tubes. Um, the shapes are circles, spheres, uh, boxes, and tubes or um, uh, cylinders, as they call it. Uh, there's a, a few books out there which um, teach anatomy and teach drawing for superhero comics and whatnot. But uh, um, the anatomy lessons are very, very good that way too. There's a lot of books out there available to, to teach you that. So let's, uh, imagine we're creating a male superhero here and the, uh, uh, compared to a normal, uh, person, uh, an, an average, um, proportion person, the superhero is ex very exaggerated as, as for their physical, uh, appearance, their, um, um, uh, I guess it was very popular, it still is, the uh, bodybuilding to, to give you those superhero proportions. Uh, and a lot of people uh, take that up. That's a, a very, uh, a lot of comic book artists have, have taken that up because they've uh, been impressed by the, the human figure and form. And then we'll take another spherical, uh, do the shoulders, um, exaggerated as uh, superheroes are. And then we'll build a couple cylinders down from that to be, make the arms. And we're going to uh, make the elbow just a little above the waist. So this is where the waist would be about here. So the elbow will be just a bit above that. So we're just going to, and we'll put another circle in there for the elbow joint. And then we'll build the a cylinder for the rest of the arm. And the rest of the arm will fill in just about mid calf, maybe just a little bit above that. And then that's where the, it'll kind of, you'll notice that the cylinder kind of narrows out as it goes toward the wrist. We'll draw another circle there for the wrist figure. And then I always draw triangles for the hands because you can build the hand shape from the, the triangles. So um, just the way I've drawn it there, I can sort of feel how, how the hand would look here, the thumb and the hand shape here. And, uh, just roughing that out there. And, uh, the waist and, uh, the legs, which are, are cylinders basically that, uh, will narrow at the knee joint there. And uh, yeah, this isn't perfect. I'm just sketching this right now. These would be refined, of course, later. And uh, maybe we'll get into a bit of that later on in this lesson. I hope so. And then 
the uh, calves are, are like an oval, basically. And the, um, the calf muscle turns out this side and basically comes in here and then tapers out this way toward the foot. Keeping the, and we'll just make the foot a triangle at the bottom there. So it's for doing a, a face on lock. Actually, I've kind of made this uh, character a little long in the arms, so we'll probably shorten that up a bit in a bit here. But uh, that's the basic look here. And then um, actually, we will do that right now. We'll just kind of shorten those arms up to get a racer tool here. And we'll. Uh, that up a bit and uh, there we have our basic superhero shape and uh, now the head which we will work on now for a male character it's usually a little bit of a stronger facial feature like a jaw and um, the jaw is usually a little more pronounced uh, the face is a little more chiseled and, and uh, angular than a female figure. Um, the, eye, the eye holes uh, would be pretty pronounced as well. Usually a pretty uh, classic, uh, I don't know how to describe when the Romans would uh, do sculptures, they would um, give them very angular chiseled features. Um, and that would separate the males from the females, but also the females could be quite uh, muscular as well in the in the Roman sculptures. I feel superheroes are are basically retold uh, Roman um, um, uh, Roman folklore. So it uh, it's you know uh, characters like Thor, the the god of thunder, and and uh, you know the sad stories like uh, the Incredible Hulk and the, and the you know the really strong guy that has uh, has this real has developed this real issue in his life and um, some great stories, but they're they're cla based on classic um, folklore. So so there we go. That gives you basic idea, and you can you can build on the the particulars, the the costume. You can you can. Um, Let's, let's make this guy uh, take his nose away here. This should be fun to do this. Uh, we are going to make this character the bird beak. because uh, I think that's pretty cool to uh, create a character like this. Let's do, let's try a different tool here. Oops. And when you get too big of a tool, you can adjust your tool there. You can erase it. Wow, so good to do that, to just erase the, your line. And, uh, well, let's give him a, some wings for his mask here. And already you're getting to see the, um, you know, the, the way you can create a superhero, uh, just uh, adding a few little touches here and there and it evolves into something else. And you can, you can play with that. If you don't like that, you can, you can just remove all that and build something else. You can build a, um, uh, you know, uh, something similar to it, but maybe create a different uh, Create a horns around the the head or something. Call him Ram Man. You know.
have fun. Just uh, at this point, you're just <laughs> you're having fun. What is your what is your main character do? Uh, just by doing this, you could evolve into a whole origin story. Um, Ram Man could have been um, uh, maybe born in a um, after a plane crash. Uh, his parents died in a plane crash, and he was raised by mountain goats <laughs> and became Ram Man. Uh, uh, was bitten by a radioactive ram. Uh, there's all kinds of uh, the, the, the sky's the limit. So, yeah, don't uh, don't hold back. Just just have fun and and uh, really really enjoy it. Uh, we can just reverse all that, I think. Uh, or we could um, let's create a new layer here, and uh, this time we will make a uh, a female superhero. And uh, we'll basically do the, the same proportions. Uh, we're going to just take that one away here. And uh, we'll, using the same idea, we'll um, go back to our here. Start from the head, and we'll get our horizontal, um, our vertical line going here so we can figure out the character. Now the female figure is a little different. It'll be a little more of an hourglass shape, maybe a narrower waist, certainly a, not as wide of a uh, torso or um, not necessarily as wide anyway, we, but we're trying to get the feminine form in here. But it's basically the same idea. We have the box for the hips and the uh, circle for the head. And we'll maybe find our features for the... Um, or the face here as well. So, so we'll basically give the uh, figure sense of hair here and a little softer features for the face. We can have her looking grim as well because superheroes are usually pretty grim. <laughs> Can be grim, but they don't have to be. We can certainly take that grimness away from the character as well. Give them a lot softer features. And uh, the arms obviously wouldn't be as, as thick or as wide as the male figure, and we could give them a longer, lither hands and, and arms. Um, let's just raise the hips a little higher here. Get the, a little more. And as you can see, there's a lot of modifying in the <laughs> at this point always use a uh, you know a sketching pencil in your program and you can you can do that with the tools here what I've done here is I've used an inking tool but you can go to drawing here and you can actually have a real exciting brush library which is really um, the gloaming which I've chosen now I think I'm gonna switch to this fray sonnet and um, just kind of uh, do the rough drawings a little rougher here. I think it was a little too precise with the other one, the other one that we used. There we go. And I think I'm starting to get a better feel for it now with this new tool. And uh, there we go. I think her arms were a little too long, but we, you, you will develop an eye for that as you, um, as you work with um, 
and, and as I say, there's there's all kinds of of uh, resources available to you, and um, uh, more than myself, uh, I'd I'd like to consider myself an expert, but I I really am just a, I'm just a student like you are, and uh, um, but uh, I've done a fair bit of anatomy, and I can sort of uh, you know adjust my eye to the uh, the proportions fairly well, but certainly not perfect. But uh, and again the maybe not as pronounced as the male figure, but certainly similar, the, um, the shape. And of course, the, uh, the chest is a little different too. It's, it's, it's maybe the, the chest uh, width isn't as big, but the, 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 the uh, chest on a woman, of course, uh, the, with breasts, it's a uh, Certainly a different proportion, and and they ha it has to be um, you know has to be right too, and uh, so we could do the same thing with our female figure here, and uh, um, she's got hair, but we could change her hairdo. Right now, we could just adjust it. Um, something like that. Would she? Uh, would we see her eyes or would we put a mask on her? That would be interesting to put a, a mask on her, on our figure here. Um, would she have a cape? Would she have a, uh, I always liked the characters that had the big collars like this. I always thought that was pretty cool on a female character. Uh, would She might have something like that. She might have um, big shoulder pads like Joan Crawford from a lot of her movies. And uh, we could play with the eyes here, give her a sort of a menacing look. Would she have light hair? Would she have dark hair? Would she... Uh, um, we've given her a smiling face here. She could have, um, as, as we showed earlier, she could have kind of a more menacing look to her. You know, maybe a kind of a Joan Rivers look. Uh, yeah, it's uh, really a lot of fun to play at this point. Her, uh, because of this uh, design at the top, you could play with her boots. You could kind of give a point to her boots up here and maybe her gloves would be the same it'd be like a, a sharp come to a sharp point on the one side it certainly would give you uh, lots lots to play with there um, uh, could be yeah what would you call her <laughs> you could call her the um, the, uh, the black widow's been used but you know there's there's a lot of uh, applications for a character like this. Uh, you could play with the emotions, which we'll uh, get into just uh, shortly here. Anyway, there's a, a look at the female superhero character, the proportions, how you can design it, and the male character. And I hope um, one or both of these will be uh, helpful to you. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll move on to the next part of the lesson which is the head. So we're uh, what I have here is the basic superhero head, and we're going to do um, actually do a female and a male character here. So um, I'll start again with the, the male superhero head, and again, that's the, um, the angular look of the face for the male character, and the usually um, sharper features on the face. And... Uh, and again, you can play with the type of character you have. What, what I've done here is I've divided the head into spheres, as I've done in some of my other uh, character drawings, and, uh, and divided into hemispheres. And um, so um, to find the area of the nose, I, I basically build a bridge of the nose here to the bottom of where this circle that created the main part of the head goes to that and then from here we'll build another triangle here to show where the chin is 
So this is uh, what we will do is we will uh, build the um, our nose would be probably in this area here. So uh, a nose would uh, you wouldn't have to show all of the details, but you could probably show like a one side of the nose. You could show the eyes. You don't have to. Superheroes a lot of times like Daredevil, which is one of my favorite comic books. Uh, he, you didn't see his eye holes uh, except to, as a secret identity, Matt Murdock. So um, the mouth would be here. So from the mouth, we have this other triangle, which is basically the same proportion, which would lead to the bottom of the chin. Shows you, you know, it's all a guidebook to show you where where the rest of the face is. And uh, your your face lower lip is usually not too prominent, but it can be. Um, the cheek line would be about where this line is here. And I'm going to uh, add a little dimple or, or divot for the face. And, and the ear would be, well, probably around around the, where the eye line is there. So you'd have your superhero uh, eye shape. And uh, voila, you've got a, a superhero male face. And you can add mask or whatever whatever else you want. Fancy hair. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, use your imagination there. But that's your that's your basic male head. So let's uh, try the female head here. We'll take away the male face. And I'll just create another layer for a female character. So we're going to find the uh, female faces not quite as... Um, as angular and, and a little softer. I, um, I always say that. I, I don't know. Uh, it's, things are changing so much. I don't know that an artist would maybe even look at it that way anymore. They might uh, um, have a totally different way of a, a totally different appreciation of the whole subject. But uh, my uh, way of thinking is that make the female softer and uh, more subtle and uh, it, it It would work uh, better that way. Maybe not as pronounced a nose. Um, the more feminine type eyes. Rounder pronounced cheeks area. Uh, a fuller lip area, I would say, than a male character. And... Uh, There, I think I've, 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 been, I've been hitting a pretty lucky so far. I think I've achieved basic my basic uh, goal here, and that's to give the, the female face a very simple, subtle, uh, softer look here. Maybe a little more chin than I wanted. I'm just going to soften that up a bit. A little heavy on the chin. That is something that... Uh, that is something to keep in mind is the you don't want your character to to look um, differently than than well you want it to look the way you want it to look so you, you do have you have to play with it as I'm doing here and then we'll find a place for where the ears would be here as well and they'd be following the same rule around the, the eye level and down and uh, again you could add you know, the character's eyes you can add an eyelid eyelashes um, the eyebrow um, and that's your female figure and you can as i say you can add to that subtract to that whatever you will um so um Having done that, uh, we'll work with a few um, heads. And, um, and, and I, I know this is a very basic thing, but th this is, um, uh, it's, it's very basic lesson, but you will, um, I know you will be able to um, develop your characters from the basics here. 
and uh, hopefully in, in future if we have future chance to do lessons we'll be able to talk more of the um the uh, more finer points but uh, for now this is a basic uh, primer for superhero for characters and um as i as i recommend uh, there's lots of resources out there to study for it and uh, um, you'll probably be able to teach me more about the subject than i will will ever teach you so let's create a few heads here let's make this a female head Using the same rules, the eye line um, where the eyes will go here. And um, just to be different, I'm going to make this uh, a face uh, face of surprise. Of a... And you can play with that. Another way, uh, one way you can do, um, show yourself what, what a figure would look like in a certain position would be to get your cell phone. This is something my wife showed me. Take a cell phone and uh, go to selfie mode. And just before you snap a picture, just look at your face. Uh, put your phone in an angle that would put your face at the angle you would like. And um, it's an old animator's trick. Um that we when we were doing animation uh, you'd have a, a rear view mirror or something at your desk where you could look at your face create the uh, the emotion that you wanted to um, wanted to transfer into your character drawing and emote that and that was a great teaching tool great uh, animation tool for uh, uh, for for drawing emotion, and it's certainly something you can use in uh, for superheroes as well, because uh, it's certainly a little more applicable because it's the the realistic figure here. Let's do a male character here doing a kind of um kind of a puzzled look or a uh, disgruntled look here. The chiseled features here in the play with it a bit there. Always, uh, always sketch this out first, and and just be ready to modify it, and know that it's not going to be perfect the first time. That you're going to probably have to uh, play with it to perfect it. But um, as you do the finding lines, you find the uh, where things should be, and and add little things that can add to the drawing. That's kind of a puzzled look there. Uh, let's do a female character here. Looking down at something in, in some fear. Kind of maybe a, or a hesitation pure hesitation here. Again, we're, we're just basically softening up the, the features. Smaller nose, smaller, uh, uh, maybe a rounder, softer uh, mouth and, and lip structure. more uh, pronounced lips it's up to it's, it's really up to the creator's uh, discretion here um, just kind of a fill in the mouth area there Proportions don't look right. You can take your your pencil and just kind of 
correct that. You can take your eraser and smooth it out a bit if you if you find it's a little too too heavy. Certainly, uh, I think it's I've made it a little heavy in places. It'll maybe made it a little angular, more angular than I wanted, and then just soften up some of the the sharp edges uh, with the with the eraser here and and correct it if I need to. But uh, that's your your basic motion there. So uh, then we'll do one more here. And um, we'll make this uh, a male figure here. Got a little more pronounced eye. Almost a um, caveman type um, forehead structure. Give him a really... Uh, yeah, just basically exaggeration, exaggerated uh, uh, look here is, is often works in superhero comics. Uh, this could be uh, looking up at Spider-Man and I'll get you next time, Spidey. Anyway, that's uh, the basis of uh, of what you would draw, and then the ear, of course, very for the male, as I say, very angular, very um, cut, sharp, sharp edged. Uh, you would uh, definitely play with that a bit more, but you got the basic idea of the of the figure's emotion, the um, furrowed eyebrows, and the. So a couple of examples there. So um, we'll just uh, maybe I'll do just one more here. Whoops, I've just uh, did something I didn't want to do. Let's just do create one more here, and it would be a um, a profile, and maybe even a rear profile of the head. This is something which uh, um, not a lot of people think of when, with superhero comics, but um, being you know, somebody that likes to look at things from a different perspective. I always like to draw superheroes from the rear three quarters of the head. And so I, I had to learn how to draw that. And uh, just because I, I think it's, uh, it's something that, that I'd like to, like to learn when I was uh, learning these things. Um, it's something that I think you might uh, get something out of too. So we're finding basically from reverse where the, where all the angles are in the face and uh, creating it from the back. There was a, an artist who did Superman named Wayne Boring who could do this so well. And he had a very simple system of uh, basically where to place the forehead, where to place the nose, where to put the cheeks, where to put the ears. And the, and the ears were just like half moons like this at the back. And... And where to, you know, where the muscles fell in for the neck and whatnot, and the back of the head, and the hairline, and there's a Superman's curlicue, um, and then the, you know, the basically the chiseled feature here for the hair, and then the, at the back of the head. So there, that's uh, something that I wish somebody had taught me, but I, I did learn it because I wanted to learn it, and I think uh, the same will be for you if anything any way of drawing something you'll um you'll study for it and, and i think today in, in today's day and age there is more resources so readily available more than far more than my time i had to go to the library or to and thank goodness we still have them to uh to do this to um to learn these things but uh, we, you also have something a great tool called the uh, the world wide web which is uh, as far as I'm concerned, probably the best learning tool ever we've ever been equipped with, and it's and it's right at our fingertips. And we, um, I wish we used it more. I wish I used it more as a as a person my age. But uh, maybe uh, uh, maybe it'll be something that as time wears on, we'll we'll all learn to use it more often. So there we go. And I think uh, I think that takes us to about uh, forty minutes here. 
And um, let's see. Um, Tom, is it a good time now to take uh, questions and answers? No. Yeah, hey, Jeff. Yeah, for sure. We could uh, do some q and I think that's a perfect timing. Um, so here, let me just... Uh, there's one observation, and I think maybe you can speak to this as well, that the face seems longer in a female character. Oh, okay. Um, it's probably because... Um... Let's see, it's, it's um, yeah, the, it could be longer. It's certainly finer. Um, it doesn't have to be. Um, it, uh, yeah, I, now that's an interesting observation. Um, I think they're about the same, but um, I think because the female features, or the features are softer and not quite as um, angular, it may appear that way. Um, and I think for for the do the acting for the acting it it can help to to make it longer. Um, but um, I think the the proportions are generally about the same. The obviously the males are are maybe thicker and more angular, and and that makes it appear wider. And the feminine feature is basically the same proportions, but finer. So um, um, that would make it seem thinner and longer <laughs> but uh, that's a good observation it's um it, it's really up to the artist's pre preference maybe that's just the way i prefer to draw them I, i'm not sure if that's the observation or not yeah that's perfect thanks jeff okay, um sure. the uh another question um do the eight and a half proportions exist in both male and female uh, basically the same. They're basically the same. Now the females are um, uh, usually s smaller than the male, but then they're they're finer uh, in the classic superhero proportions. And uh, they're it. I would draw it in the same proportions, the eight and a half heads. That's that's my observation on that. But um, I don't know if there's any set rules on that i i know i've read um soup, uh, how to draw comics the marvel way and they they basically teach that that's about eight and a half heads tall for both the male and female uh, characters so um again it, it um it's really the artist's interpretation but um that that's the way uh, i was basically taught and uh and that's the way i approach it so it's there's no there's no hard and fast rule. Your comics are your comics, right? So, yeah, so more like guidelines, right? Like to starting right. guidelines. Yeah. Um, okay. Here's another question: uh, What happens when the superhero's body type is more diverse? Do the typical portions change? Would it follow the same format? Um, well, um, yeah. There's a lot of superheroes which are very um, unique. Uh, and not proportioned that way so that uh, they don't have to fit the same rules, um, but they would have to be, you know, each time you drew it, it would have to be proportioned to the way they were designed, of course. Um, they would, uh, the proportions would have to fall within the, the guidelines that the creators uh, created. So, um, yeah, I would say that, um, uh, yeah, there's a, a character named Puck, who is in the Alpha Flight uh, comics and and very abnormal, you know, very, not abnormal, but very uniquely proportioned compared to uh, certainly not the your typical Marvel superhero proportions, but uh, um, but he's drawn, you know, in those proportions all all the way all the time. So uh, so that would be my answer to that. Yeah, that they're they are not always um, again no hard and fast rules to it. It's uh, but if you've created the character, you have to maintain the, the proportions in what you do uh, drawing to drawing. Yeah, I think that's a good uh, comment there, Jeff, that um, I guess you're, what I'm getting too, I think it's fascinating is that there's a, you're getting, a, you're creating your own uh, character. So it's your own rules, your own world. 
And so yeah. you, you would create like, you'd have to have like a, I guess a style guide. You would say, this is always what the size of the character is. And then you would keep following that, right? So that someone doesn't, someone else doesn't yeah. draw it smaller or differently, right? That's right. Yeah. And, and most of the, you know, most of the superheroes, uh, they, they are drawn with, uh, well, any characters that we did in animation, they, we did a style sheet, basically a, a template for the character and how, what their proportions were and, uh, you know, how many heads tall they were and, um, and the, you know, the proportions of the, of the body. And, and we were expected to keep that consistent every time we drew the character. And, and that's, that's why using the shapes and the, um, the cylinders, the boxes, the circles are so important in designing the character and to keep drawing it time after time, because those are your, uh, as you say, Tom, they're your guidelines to drawing consistently time after time. And it's, uh, it's the tool, the tool of the trade really. Yeah. I think that's, yeah, that's a really good uh, comment and uh, yeah. Discussion yeah, on that. Very, very good think, observation. Yeah. And so uh, here's a, uh, how the superhero, how have superheroes change throughout history in shapes? If, is there um, other historical changes? Well, well, they, well, one thing I've noticed, I've, uh, I've only been here on this earth for 60 years, but I've noticed that it, it uh, is really affected by the audience, um, what the audience likes. Um, the, um, when when I was young, uh, th there was a style uh, very simplistic and and very basic, and um, but then it got very sophisticated with people like um, actor artists like uh, Jack Kirby, who very you know very um, dynamic, really moody type of drawings, and and then into Neil Adams, who drew realistic. Um, exaggerated but very realistic drawings in the 1970s and 80s and and still I still think he was one of the best artists that that I ever saw and now it's uh, there are different several different styles which are very popular and and I found that find them kind of based on uh, 1960s uh, TV cartoons like the super friends and that sort of thing they, they very much like that and that's very popular. So, um, so it really is based on what's popular with the, with the readership or with the viewership or whatever you want to call it at the time. So that that's, you know, as, as fans, their input opinions matter a lot. And, um, so yeah, that's what uh, really makes the difference. What, what do, what do the, does the audience like, what do they respond to? And uh, you'll find that that will impact things more than, uh, you know, more than what the even the artists want to do. Perfect, Je Jeff. I just had a question because you mentioned Superman before, and kind of yeah. the the you know the person that's a human that changes into a superhero. So in that case, would you would Superman as a human be drawn? in like these larger proportions than Superman as the superhero. Oh, <laughs> right. Um, well, um, again, uh, uh, I would say, uh, Superman was, uh, uh, was a dual, had a dual identity, as you recall, it has a dual identity, as you know, um, he's the newspaper reporter, Clark Kent, or whatever he is now. <laughs> Uh, but in history, he was a, um, a newspaper reporter, a very non, uh, nondescript, a very forgettable news newsman. And uh, in, in wears a suit by by day and then, you know, rips open the suit in the phone booth and becomes Superman, a very super proportion character. So uh, that was a bit of a challenge, I think, for a lot of the artists that did Superman uh, to make this very superior proportion guy uh, some somebody that, that nobody really noticed in uh, when he wasn't superman and to, to so that people didn't uh, separate them but uh, yeah that would be that be that's the challenge is to uh, um, to create something that you know you, the reader believes that's superman under those those clothes but um, they have to present it in such a way that the the people in in the reality 
that uh, Clark Kent lives in don't recognize him as Superman. So, um, yeah, I, I think Superman is was created as a bigger than life person physically as well as um, mythologically. And um, but, you know, it was certainly a challenge in the story and then the uh, which I think is a classic uh, mythological hero. Um, you know, a, a regular guy by day, but he becomes a superhero secretly in a different uh, light. So, um, yeah, that's that's a good way of looking at it. Perfect. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I don't have. I don't see any other questions. So I think that's a uh, yeah fantastic uh, um, uh, point to to end at. But uh, yeah, thank you very much, Jeff. Really appreciate uh, all your insight and uh want to remind everyone that um we can uh you can watch you know rewatch this um with uh through crowdcast so you're you're registered on this so you can uh, rewatch it and go over some of the techniques and concepts that jeff uh, spoke about if you want to review um as you uh you know if you wish to attempt your own drawings uh if you did some while we were going that's great and maybe you want to try some uh, after um, and then this gives you the ability to rewatch. So really uh, uh, appreciate Jeff uh, for, for doing this. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks again, Jeff. Thank you, Tom. And thanks, everybody. Okay, so I just want, I just want to thank uh, all of our uh, uh, partners on this too, I should mention. So we have uh, the Blue Mountains Public Library, Collingwood Public Library, uh, the Wasaga Beach Public Library. So thanks uh, everyone and uh, your libraries and all the members of the libraries for uh, being part of this and um, joining us. And also the Canada Council for the Arts uh, for making this uh, uh, project uh, ongoing. So thanks again, everyone, and uh, have a good uh, rest of the day. <laughs>